Hello. If you're like me, you live in a part of the country that sees inclement weather on a regular basis. I used to be okay with a few hour long weather related power outages, but in the past few years, the frequency of multi-day outages has substantially increased. Looking for our daily routine to not be hindered by the power of mother nature, I began my obligatory search for the perfect backup power solution. There's an almost endless amount of information online and if you spend enough time going through it, you could probably leave with an internet journeyman electrician certification. Disclaimer though, I do not consider myself expert enough to even hold that kind of certification, but I do feel my research for the past 12 to 18 months, the good and bad choices I have made over the same period and the lessons learned qualify me to express my own opinion within the confines of my own channel. Now that you've all been warned, let's move on to my attempts to qualify my statement that inverter generators make for the best first generators. To quickly summarize the main difference between a standard and an inverter generator, the latter has additional circuitry allowing it to output clean power. In most cases, they output what is known as a pure sine wave, which makes them friendlier to sensitive electronics. Now, there are a lot of arguments out of both sides that will lead you to believe most modern electronics don't care about the cleanliness of the AC power input they receive. This can be true, but isn't always the case, and most devices don't really come with a glaring warning to provide any clues. Since most have power supplies that convert AC power to DC, it really comes down to their power supplies and not really the electronic internals. For the purpose of this exploration into the benefits of inverter generators, I will focus on portable generators only. Permanent standby generators will be beyond the scope of my arguments and likely beyond the budget of most first-time buyers. The last few statements will eventually lead to my point that inverter generators make the best first generators. But before we get there, let me go over a short list of what my research has shown as the main drawbacks of inverter generators. Number one, cost. This is probably the most valid one as first time generator buyers may not want to spend too much upfront for something that they're not even certain will work best for their situation. Inverter generators due to the added hardware and complexity will always cost more per running output rating than their equivalent standard counterpart. Number two, max output. This is mostly true with portable generators as opposed to permanent standby generators, but simply put, portable inverter generators are only offered up to a certain output rating, somewhere around the 7 kilowatt range. It is much more difficult to find a larger entire home inverter type generator than it is a standard one. Number three, running time. This one is a bit of a wild card. You see, one of the points that drives my argument has to do with fuel efficiency. Unfortunately, because of their construction, most inverter type generators have smaller fuel tanks than their standard counterparts. There are exceptions, mostly to do with the enclosure package. Some companies offer two versions of their same output class inverter generators. One in their more typical closed noise dampening enclosures and another in an open frame enclosure. The latter will resemble a standard portable generator and be much louder, but also will likely have longer running times due to their ability to include a larger fuel tank. And number four, max voltage limit. Most portable inverter generators, especially those under the 5 kilowatt class, offer no out of the box 240 volt output option. This is true even when running in parallel mode with a second unit. During the past year and a half, I have been diving into the sometimes insomnia inducing world of backup generator power. I've been weighing the pros and cons of various types, output ratings, installation options, both permanent and semi-permanent, and in the process I have procured several units and supporting hardware to gain a sense of comfort and security. I have somehow ended up with three different generators, two of which are somewhat redundant and one that is, in my opinion, the start of the show. My first acquisition consisted of a Predator 4000 from Harbor Freight. This unit appears to be very common amongst first-time generator parents. At just over 100 pounds, this unit is relatively easy to move around, especially when paired with the available wheel kit. It also provides plenty of running power for several appliances and does offer 240 volt output right from its front panel. Once I fell deeper into the rabbit hole, my second acquisition consisted of a Predator 9000. This thing, for the price, is one of the mid-range portable generator bargains today. It is essentially a slightly upgraded version of their 8750 unit and can easily run most important circuits on a typical home, provided the home consists of modern LED lighting, gas heating, and energy efficient appliances. You could run a mid-size home electric heat pump or central AC unit with this, but it would likely need to be the only circuit enabled. 
My third and most recent acquisition was a WEN 56203i inverter generator. This is a two revisions newer version of the 56200i, which is almost identical to the Predator 2000. Features it offers over its older sibling and Harbor Freight cousin include a fuel shutoff feature, the fuel cap is now offset to the side to prevent spillage over the control panel, and over the Predator unit, an oil quick access hatch. Quickly looking over the specs, you can see this is a relatively small unit, despite having a decent amount of power. The unit itself comes in at about 38 pounds dry and somewhere between 46 and 48 pounds with fluids, which makes it easy to haul around by most healthy adults. The half load runtime is about average to slightly above average average for units in its class, as is the fuel tank capacity. As you can see, this is a small fuel tank, but its rated runtime is a testament as to the efficiency of inverter units. The harmonic distortion rating is excellent and guarantees a clean, pure sine wave that should cause no harm to any electronic device. The operating noise levels, I believe these are measured at 25 feet, fall within the lower end of the noise spectrum for similar generators. Some will always argue and defend their little Honda units, but I'll take an extra 2 dBs for one third of the price any day. Lastly, I should point out that although the specs in published graphical material appear to suggest it has a 78cc engine, all documentation points to it being a 79cc unit, including the written specs on the product page, which lists it as a 79.7cc engine. As with most things in life, choosing between generator types always comes down to individual situations and considerations. I'll break this down. First, cost. Set aside a budget so that you know how much generator you can afford. The rest of the considerations will be governed by your budget. Running output rating. How much power do you need? This, of course, should be dissected farther into crucial, important, nice-to-haves, and won't-need categories during an outage in order to make the proper decision. Runtime. This will depend entirely on the use and ease of access of the generator. If you'll be using this to run power tools equipment that will only be on-off on demand, runtime might not be very important. Just be sure to keep extra fuel containers nearby. If you intend to run crucial loads for a home during a major power outage, especially outage involving severe weather that could present a hazard to you, having a generator that can last through the night might be very important. Size and ease of transport. If your unit will require frequent moving, a compromise between output and portability should be considered. Most inverter generators support parallel configurations adding versatility. Noise restrictions. This one is often overlooked by first-time buyers. If you live out in the country or have a very large property, your neighbors may not even realize you have a generator running, regardless of how noisy it may be. City dwellers and most suburban situations will likely require lower noise units for any number of reasons, starting with municipality noise ordinances and ending with psychotic neighbors. There's always bribing your neighbor with an extension cord, but that won't always help keep the peace. And lastly, portable versus permanent standby. Will this generator be in use often and will it need to power several crucial loads? While portable generators can be installed in a manner that assimilates more expensive permanent units, there are inherent benefits to having a standby generator that is able to automatically energize circuits needed to maintain the state of your property. This is particularly important for homes that rely on septic pumps and other systems that could introduce the risk of property damage when not operating. Ironically for my argument, my list of cons almost entirely aligns with my list of important considerations when purchasing your first generator. So why then would I even dare argue that portable inverter generators are the best choice for first-time buyers? The answer comes down to balance compromise. Aside from extreme budgetary situations, there is enough of an overlap in generator output class and price to give us options within that gray area that can still satisfy your most crucial needs while keeping a balance within the confines of all considered parameters. Matters. Think of the argument as Al versus Tim's character in the TV show Home Improvement. When presented with a choice or opportunity to exercise choice, Tim will almost always go for power, but inevitably ends up in disaster because he doesn't consider the circumstances. Al, on the other hand, always remains calm and collected and chooses wisely. Most importantly, he uses his choice wisely. When I first set out to purchase my first generator, budget was a huge constraint, so I went with the biggest I could buy at the time. Eventually, ignoring all other considerations, it quickly became just a gateway drug, and as soon as I could sensibly afford something bigger, I went out and I bought it. I left Harbor Freight grunting like an ape that day. 
Fast forward almost a year and I found myself realizing how inconvenient my choices were for my situation. First of all, they are loud. Perhaps not the loudest in the respective classes, but loud enough to keep neighbors and our household awake most of the night. Also, although they have slightly better run times, this is a result of larger fuel tanks, which translates to a heck of a lot more fuel consumption. And perhaps the biggest nuisance of them all, they are heavy. The Predator 4000 is manageable when on an empty tank, but once you fill it up, it's a bit of a short to move around a slope property. The 9000 on the other hand requires two people in most situations. I was aware of inverter generators for some time, but always looked down on them as just overpriced and underpowered hardware. Never judge a generator type by its specs though. These little gems allow for a perfect ballet between different uses that more than make up for their upfront costs and seemingly reduce specs. Their versatility is their superpower. Let's explore their versatility in more detail, starting with dimensional advantages. A low mid-range portable inverter generator averages 45 pounds and has the size to match its weight. They resemble slightly oversized portable gasoline tanks in their form factor, helping them fit just about anywhere. Most units in this size range will have a carry handle built into their outer case, which makes them extraordinarily easy to haul around at a moment's notice clean power output. One of the main reasons most will even venture down the path of inverter versus standard generators is their ability to directly output clean power, often as pure sine waves. This will be important to those worried about sensitive electronics around the home, including many modern gas furnaces with certain blower motor types that can run hotter and less efficient under square wave or modified wave AC power. Adequate power output. To properly qualify this statement, the dimensional advantages need to be kept at the forefront. For how compact and light these units can be, their ability to output enough power to support an entire 13 to 20 amp, 120 volt circuit, and as you move up the ladder, multiple circuits is impressive. Quiet operation. This is usually the main marketing selling point from inverter generator manufacturers, and to an extent, I agree with it being so. Having a small package generator that can sustain 1600 to 1800 running watts while producing noise levels below normal conversation at 20 to 25 feet is a feat of design and engineering that I'm glad has been achieved in our time. Long-term cost of operation. These units are much easier to maintain and service than their larger, bulkier, higher-powered counterparts. They make use of smaller engines, require considerably less oil to operate, and are more fuel-efficient per wattage output. Of course, standard generators can still be useful and better suited for many situations, still making them viable options for first-time buyers. If you have a large property and require extra long running times, a standard portable generator will almost always be better suited for you. In situations where alternate fuel sources are being used, such as propane or natural gas, there are more standard generator choices available, but also it is much easier to modify an open frame standard generator to support multiple fuel types. I would also recommend a larger standard generator when building a semi-permanent installation, such as using a modified outdoor shed near your generator inlet. Most inverter generators are plastic cladded for noise dampening and require a fair amount of space around them to operate efficiently. Open frame standard generators can be easily supplied with sufficient cooling when housed inside a properly modified shed. And lastly, if budget isn't an issue, you can always augment your power output with both a larger standard unit to cover most of your power loads and a smaller inverter unit for very specific circuits. Although not planned that way, I found myself in this latter scenario. It has made my Predator 4000 redundant, which I'll likely be selling at some point. The combination of my Predator 9000 and WEN 56203i allows me to power most of my house during the day with the larger generator and then keep the inverter generator running overnight to comply with noise ordinances. As you can see, there's a multitude of considerations that can drive your decision to choose one generator type over the other for any given situation. If you're in the market for your very first generator, I hope that the information and thoughts I have provided help you make the right decision. And if you feel your first purchase wasn't the right choice, there's always Craigslist. Thanks for watching.